And here we are. And I'd like to start off by giving a little bit of context to this meeting. There was an intersection of two sort of projects that were coming together that came about as a result of talking with uh, Nova and Greg. And uh, the first start was speaking with Nova and we've been working on a Planetary Guardians spell casting divination tool uh, for the past little while. And we have a, a prototype that uh, Nova wanted to see if there's anyone else on the team and anyone else that was gonna be using this. And uh, it's just been him and I that have been working on it. And so this is bringing a prototype to other members of various teams to get your feedback and to start to connect into how it's gonna link into your particular part because everyone here has a very big part of uh, the very secret plan. And uh, then Greg and I were speaking yesterday in a bit of a, a synchronistic storm and we started playing a bit of a game. We started uh, opening up to the universe to sort of direct uh, this synchronicity that was happening. So first I'd like to go over to Greg and if you don't mind if I facilitate this meeting here today uh, from everyone and I'm just going to sort of point and move the chess pieces around as we go and, and bring in different pieces and everyone here is going to have their chance to bring in their piece and it's a bit of a brainstorm a bit of a of a integration here and so why don't we start with Greg and why don't you build a bit of context as you were doing yesterday and then uh, we'll go from there. We still can't hear you, Greg. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we understand sign. <laughs> he just has to check and make sure his, he's using the right um, microphone. Beside the mute button, there's a little tiny arrow. Click that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, why don't, as Greg is getting his mic going, um, how about we begin to get contacts maybe from some other people from everyone here. We'll get contacts from everyone who's here and then we'll go back to Greg who hopefully by that time is coming in with his audio. So perhaps Lori, would you like to start out by saying, uh, how about everyone go with about five minutes of context building from what is your connection to the very secret plan and how would you like to use an on, uh, well just what's your connection into the very secret plan right now? In my connection, I am a financial advisor and I've run a company for 26 years, which I just recently am in the transition of successioning out of it. So I've always kind of liked that world because I like the people, but I did some mapping with Elijah in 2011 and then we did a values map around my company and we worked with the team to build it. And it was so powerful from 2011 to now how all those values were so played such a significant role in my company and how I just was guided around that circle with the roles and everything that people played and the growth in my team at my company. So where I see my, like where I see as part of the secret plan is how do we heal our relationship with money and to money? Because it's, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. I, I was a financial advisor. I'm going to be letting that go but I still want to coach people around money, kind of transforming our relationships around money. So um, I use points of view training, which I did years ago in Costa Rica. I use that with the Enneagram, with the inflow matrix to help people build a plan or set intentions around what they want to happen around money. But it takes them. What I did when Elijah showed me the map and he said that the two on the map was economics. I go, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So I took the economics, that wheel, and made my own nine wheel. So at one is accounting, how well do you keep track of your money? And it takes me through every process for a client to go through to actually become more aware of their beliefs and everything else that's holding them back from abundance and prosperity. So, but I also see, now that's just around money, but I also see it working in organizations to build teams, stronger teams, because we all know 
you know, there's the steward of the ship, but there's also the rest of the team and organizations that create the, the power of that ship. So how do we develop the people that are in or nonprofit, whether they're in corporate, whatever they're in, even family units, like how can we take that to a new level for people? So that's kind of where I am. I'm honored to be here to meet all of you and see your beautiful faces. And uh, I just wanna say, Elijah, thank you for the years and years of work that you've been doing. And I think it's time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Lori. Uh, Lara, would you like to go next? Um, sure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, where do I start? Uh, okay, I think my part in the very secret plan is about bringing it to people and integrating it, integrating uh, your card sets, your maps, and helping people individually on what path they're on, and uh, facilitating um, the whole system, really. Um, I own a store in Duncan, and I have the first um, physical, uh, I guess, public map on the um, parking lot of in front of my store. And it's really interesting to see people uh, look at it and see it and be interested in it. And um, I've been working on it for years. Like, I guess, um, on the emotional side, and trying to integrate that into um, the public and get it out there and really use it and utilize it and do wheels and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, getting people to make decisions from their hearts and like really look at and map out all their things, like all the beautiful things you created, Elijah, it's amazing. So um, yeah, I just wanna get it out there in the world as well. It's time <laughs> for sure. Excellent, uh, Zamir, can you come from the darkness? Yeah, I'll come up from the darkness. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zamir. I just, um, coincidentally, Elijah, someone passed the torch to you in the um, other dimension today. Uh, I had an interaction with a cartographer who gave me his drafting board that might end up making its way to you. And very interesting to be with another map maker today. Um, my, I think Elijah has been so good at keeping the secret plan secret that I don't even know exactly my role in the secret plan. Um, it's a secret even to me, perhaps. And so, uh, truth be told, um, that being said, I've, um, the thing that's coming to mind is I recently reached out to a man uh, in Yemen. Yemen is probably the worst hit country in the world today in terms of war and famine and he put a proposal to me saying he wants to do like a youth empowerment campaign for youth in Yemen and I feel that it's really important that um, we have a more concerted intentional global response to displacement um, particularly for youth and children affected by war and um, Somehow, somewhere, I feel like there's a way in which there's things that we can do with the help of these tools, uh, not only to educate youth, but to create ways for people to interact so that they can, we can find a more like compassionate, insane response to, um, to this emerging global issue that's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So that's, that's what I feel right now. Do you want to give a bit of background maybe on how we knew each other? Because if I could just say something, Ramayan and Zamir uh, and I made a shared knowledge community value system. How many years ago? Maybe, maybe 10? Well, ten. More than 10. Yeah, 10 years ago. And that that is the first time that the shared knowledge community was programmed as a value system. I think that that is acting upon us right now. Um, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was it was integrity at, at governance and it was cooperation at research. 
and it was um, simplicity and infrastructure, and then accountability at operations, and then it was inspiration at creativity. Um, what was it? A synergy, compassion. Compassion. At synergy, and then um, don't remember what was that services philanthropy. Awareness. Awareness, right? And then boldness at marketing, right? And then clarity. Yeah. And so clarity. Uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was one of those ones where we're just like, yeah, that, that probably is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not, you know, Elijah sometimes is like, well, you know, do like so many versions of the same map. And sometimes it's like, when it's not broken, don't fix it. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, hi, Brooke. Thanks for joining us. We're just in the middle of uh, identifying each person's sort of part in the very secret plan. Um, do you want to show yourself? Or are you are you there? I'm here. I'm just doing some writing right now. Uh, I guess I could show my face. Yeah. <laughs> How do I make this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I have a fairy background. Uh, from the fairy kingdom. Um, yeah. <laughs> Greg, have you got the audio done for yours yet? Nope. <laughs> Can't hear you. Okay, Jordan, why don't you go ahead with you? Cool. Um, okay, I've just been um, enamored with Elijah's work, um, working with the time stream, um, starting recently invigorating myself with the social spaces. Um, I take a lot of personal space, and I've spent my time basically um, mm, identifying uh, different ways that I can interpret my experience or different frames that I can filter through. So basically, primarily with your uh, alpha, beta, delta waves of like um, perceiving reality. So basically, if I had like, I got this string, and if I were to look at it from beta, it's tied in a very intricate way. And these uh, waves are very particular, you can map this and create, you know, a lot of interesting content based on that experience. Alpha, I really like this. I want to like tie around things, make costumes and stuff. And Delta, I think this really shows the interwovenness of the light and the dark, you know, as we're motioning through life. And so I've, I've been taking these uh, different aspects of myself, of way of perceiving reality. And um, basically with Alpha, Beta, Delta, anything that you look at, instead of just looking at it from your instant, like one on one, now you're triangulating your thoughts at every point, right? And, uh, and basically taking those, then you got alpha, beta, delta, right? And so we got this wave, you got this wave, you got this wave that are moving at different frequencies. And then using the time stream, um, taking them and dividing them into nine different segments that are each, um, you know, identifying a different aspect of yourself. Again, with uh, um, eight being we're here to come together to lead the world into a new paradigm Two being, I want to make coffee and I have snacks and stuff. You know, there's all the different aspects of myself reflected through this, uh, you know, multifaceted mirror that covers my holistic experience. Right. And you can see a little bit like that's basically all the different parts. Um, so like, yeah, three by nine, so 27 main uh, components of my being, which basically allow me to look at a point, and view it from a very, very holistic um, way, in which case all my needs, all my desires, all my passions, everything that I am is considered in how I'm approaching uh, whatever I'm approaching. So beginning to experience a balance and a fluency in how all the different components, all the different levels, all the different frames relate in a harmony and creating that harmony in myself and then sculpting my business and how I conduct myself to incorporate that fluency of uh, transition from thought and frame of reference to another point in the system. And then applying that to content creation is my, uh, um, in terms of how I'm primarily applying that is through uh, creating videos. So discovering what people are into, their essence, their passion, their desire, and then hosting, uh, like helping frame that in a way that we can bring it to the world through media. Thank you. And uh, Chinoa. Um, okay, well, um, I've been 
learning about this new paradigm toolkit for the last, I guess, year and a half, close to two years. And um, I've been a person that has done a lot of divination for, you know, 35, 40 years. Um, and so this, this is a new way of divination that I found really fascinating because it helps, it helps with integrating um, different aspects of myself without being sort of um, archetypal in a way in terms of the tarot or any other card reading system. So um, I find that really valuable. I've used the maps a couple of times. Um, I like, I have a three table where I've done a couple of um, manifestation, um, I don't know, he calls them spells. You call them spells, right, Elijah? <laughs> uh, like a manifestation plan using a couple of the different card sets. So the readings I find have always been sort of almost spot on in a way. And um, so I'm looking at, well, how can I use these readings and put it into my avenue of work, which is working with, um, working with um, intimacy and spirituality. So um, I'm just here to support and I'm really loving, I've seen some of the, uh, the model of um, how we can use this divination online. So I'm excited to see it expand into something that can be used in a really broad sense. And I find this really interesting that people come from so many different points of view or so many different aspects and that the system can be can be um, adapted to, to different streams of you know, helping people in different ways, creating what you want in different ways and um, bringing people together, you know, um, so that I think we're all on the same page from a humanistic point of view. So um, I'm just here to learn and figure it out. Thank you, Chinoa. Uh, Brooke, did you want to come in and sort of say your, your, what part of the secret plan you've been in so far? Um, I just got in, so I would just like to listen right now and just see what's happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good enough for me. Uh, Nova, we'll go over to you. Uh, Greg, are you on audio yet or you're just going to be the silent witness? who had the context for what we're he, he sent a message, but you know, I think Greg, if you can hear, if you're able to leave and then come back in again, and then check the bottom part of your screen and check that the, when it says join audio, you have to click join audio and then choose like the, whatever it says, like use the device, use your computer device or something. Mm. So I suggest leaving the room clicking the link, coming back in. And then when it says join audio, do that thing again and use like, and it says use device audio. And so if you click use device audio, it'll make sure you're using the right thing. So I suggest trying that. Okay, Greg, you can do that? Yes. I guess we'll see. Okay, Nova, would you like to go ahead? and sure. perhaps give a bit of free context for uh, what we're going to show them? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so I guess as far as that goes, uh, me and Elijah have been working on a uh, divination tool, you could call it. Uh, it's a pretty simple technology. Um, <clears throat> he may or may not have sent you a link already, but basically uh, it uses the lenses he's created and uh, some pre-made questions that people can select from or more so six categories, and then it'll pick a question for them and give them a spell. Uh, so that's one piece we've been working on. Uh, we've also been working on a chat room technology and definitely discussed a lot of other things. Uh, as far as my role in the Very Secret Plan, uh, from my understanding, I am the IT person at this point and attempting to create the electronic technology versions of the system. Yes. I'm, I'm just wondering if perhaps you can, do you want to bring up a screen share and show it to what, what you've got so far? Okay. Just give me a moment. 
And as he's doing this, I mean, each person here, you know, has a very, I think, huge part to play. And this tool is going to be, I think, the beginning of the feeder system to each of our businesses, because the main thing is to set each of you up in the business of what you're in and to create these flows between us and between the different products. So uh, you've got to allow me to share. Right. right. Um, okay. Okay. I'm gonna make a tea. <laughs> All right, so can everyone see this? Yeah. So it's obviously pretty simple at this point. Uh, we're just starting out with this prototype version. So the idea is you can pick one of these uh, types of questions. Let's say we'll pick a business question uh, it'll give you a randomly selected question, and then the lenses will start popping up here. And my internet's a bit slow. It may take a moment here, but it'll be faster on your device, I believe. Well, I'm going to try that again because it should have worked already. Let's pick a, a social question. There we are. So it gives you the three lenses, which is the spell, and then you can create a new spell. Uh, there's obviously some share buttons here, and you, you'll be able to save the spell. This part I haven't finished yet, but you can save it as a PDF or an image file and then share that with people as well, your specific spell. Uh, but just to quickly demonstrate again, you can pick a different one, say friendship. How do I deepen my friendships? And it'll give you a different spell again. And so it's obviously the usefulness of this is pretty open. Um, it can be integrated into other pieces or used by itself. That's a great one for this time that we're in right now. Yeah. How would you interpret that, Zamir? Well, I mean, I think most of the most of the um, the fractures that are happening in friendships right now are because of people's like basically conforming or not conforming to the prevailing narrative around what's happening with COVID. And I think um, a lot of that has to do with research. I think there's a lot of people that don't understand, haven't done their research or shared their research. And this whole notion of conformity and research, I feel is kind of underlying, like I said, the significant divisions amongst people and the possibility for deepening friendship could actually really take place if these two areas were taken more deeply into consideration, understanding what conformity is and what is unconscious nonconformity and what is helpful research and unhelpful. And I just felt like, wow, what if, how share their views on this? Because I think that this is what's causing rifts in friendship, but could maybe deepen them as well. Does anyone else have something to add? Am I uh, in audio now? Oh, yeah. Come on in, Greg. I was just going Thanks. to add. Oh, okay, go ahead. I was just going to add that um, on top of what Zamir said, bringing the research and the idea of conformity together into consciously designing our conversations. And I think we have that opportunity through social media where we can think before we speak, you know, and a creativity conversation. Um, being an intention and attention, uh, being, paying attention to the other person and, you know, what's the intention in the conversation that we're, that we're designing in the social realm in order to do more content. So that's my extra thought. I just want to throw out there as well. You can look at this yourself at uh, www.choosearemedy.com. That may change, but it is what it is right now. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm gonna, do you want me to stop sharing now, Elijah? Uh, yeah. Okay. So 
Now we can maybe go over to you, Greg, and um, you can set the contacts after we've heard from everybody around what we were speaking about yesterday. Nice. You ready for is yeah. my turn? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so framing, reframing time, the practical application of the fourth dimension. It's a way that we're for me, you've created this system that gives us uh, markers to to navigate this four dimensional time that we're that we're forced to move in to now as a species. I mean, we're already in it, but to, forced to acknowledge it. You're so this. what we were talking about the other day and my interest in what I think I can hopefully bring to the table is, is a way to market it. Um, I'm a student of Fuller, so it's always about um, you have and creating the, um, something that's a hundred percent of mutual benefit and so it's it's a game board basically that I have that creates a frame for your work among 104 other people who are in the con. I guess if you ask me a question, I could be more specific. I'm a little bit. Dumb. I think the last few sentences were broken up too much to understand. Do you want to give a bit of context as to what we were talking about yesterday, though? Uh oh. You coming in and out? Hello. You are. Sounds like there's a little mouse somewhere. It's somewhere. Slow, so it's throwing me off. There's a disconnect. Okay. Well, I don't think we're quite getting you on, on the context of the music, right? I mean, Elijah, if you have the context clear, rather than us stumble through it with Greg, why don't you just say it? Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you can hear me. Well, I mean, there, there was a bit of a, like, with, with the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction coming up, it's just at the end of a very big cycle. And as me and Greg were speaking about yesterday, the idea of bringing 144 people together in a game Sort of came up out of the blue, and it was you know, so much in alignment with sort of the idea that I've been playing with for a while. <laughs> we, we came up with a thought of maybe trying to bring people together, but it was a still uh, image, of Elijah. Huh? Have to <laughs> okay, and Anyway, like the reason I, this is the first time in, in a very long time that I've actually asked people to come and people came. Mm -hmm. And I've been sort of waiting to sort of get a team or, or group together that's going to sort of consistently sort of come together. And I'm thinking Sundays at four, that this is going to be like the official team meeting for people who are participating. And this is where, you know, we need to start doing some teamwork and bring our different gifts together whatever form and I think I've given up the idea of figuring out of how to do it but I think that no matter what we just have to meet we have to start to share and get to know one another because each of you I've spent time with individually but I haven't brought you together into a team yet and you know Lara is very committed to bring the, the work into the world uh, Lori's very committed to bring the work into the world uh, Jordan's very committed to bring the work into the world Noah's very committed to bring the work into the world and uh, the rest of you are sort of in, in your own space with it. I'm not expecting it from you, but each of you has demonstrated a different um, interest. I mean, no, Zamir has his own card deck and Zamir represents somebody to me who's like an ally who is, is kind of working in the same direction. 
but not necessarily this specific product, but there may be a, a connection between this software program and his own software program in terms of divination. And so it, it, each person it's up to them kind of to, to figure out together how we're going to piece these pieces together. With Lori Renton. Yeah, totally. One thing that would be cool that I just discovered because I'm looking at how do I bring my card set um, basically online um, as an app. And what I found is that you can actually convert a WordPress site into an application. So whoever is going ahead and starting to do the design, if you create a website for this in WordPress and think about it, you know, smart, it's something that all of us would be able to start accessing and using and inviting our friends and they could have a login to use it. And then afterwards, once we've built the site, which is pretty much free to build, then there's uh, these tools that you can convert the site into an app so that you can run it on your phone. So, you know, that could save a lot of, you know, money to doing app design, which is kind of expensive. And so I would think that that would be a great way to do it is probably for us to think about like Nova's already got a sense of, you know, what, what the basic functionality of it is. And then we can just decide, okay, how, how would we like to use this? And then have someone who has some design skills start to create some designs and turn it into a website. And we all start interacting with it, you know, on the website, which it seems like you already have. Nova, is that what you said? There's a website that this is being used on? Um, <clears throat> the, the tool that you saw is one of the tools we're working on. And we do okay. have a few domain names. You do have a few domain names. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I found this thing where you can convert a, a website into into an app directly. And so that might be a cool thing. Anyways, that might be too technical. I don't know if that's the point of our current conversation, but thought I'd share that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you could get a link to what you're talking about to me somehow, that I definitely want to take a look at it. Sure. Sorry, Elijah. Yeah, I you sort of interrupted me in, in my where I was going, and I don't know where I'm going anymore. Um, if you take a look at the screen that I'm showing you, that's sort of like the upgraded version of the uh, one you just saw. But what I'd like to have is uh, a way like where you see, let's say the School of Conscious Communication, there might be the link to uh, the Learning Center or to the Spinning Mini or to one of your companies, Jordan, or to your website, you know, it's, it's like looking at how do we custom design the screen to fit to individual businesses, but you then use that as a methodology to draw people to your business and what you're doing. And so what I, I'd like to work with Nova is, is a way of not just one site, which everyone comes to, that we have a way to sort of create multiple uh, sites that then can be custom designed individually to each business. And that would be part of the business model, the people in the beginning, you know, since you're part of the test group, it's very different from, you know, afterwards bring another business on board where we're actually selling it as a, mm -hmm. as a program. And so what Nova wanted to do, he wanted to find out if there was other people around and to see if there's actually a team. Uh, and I, I see, you know, especially Lori and Lara who have specific businesses that are already running and they already want to integrate, you know, the new paradigm toolkit into what they're doing. And so uh, as test cases, you know, they're very important. And I know Jordan has different ideas and he's more on the support side for creating support materials and videos and media to, to bring the people, let's say, to the site. And uh, Brooke is kind of like a secret agent who's wandering around in the wilderness, finding things out. And Zamir is always, there's critical analysis depending on, on how much you know each of you wants to participate. But uh, I just wanted to have a kind of a short meeting. I think we're going to run out of Zoom. Um, the timing because we I don't have a paid version, so we're going to be cut out soon. But I just I just wanted to to say hello and to begin to share the screen and to get a little bit of feedback from you. And is there anyone who wants to say something about what you saw with the um, with the program? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm just wondering if any of these, uh, if there's going to be, like I can see how this structure here can 
can expand and you can have um, maybe a list of maps or for different purposes that can that someone could then do a divination for a map that they choose. Oh. Yeah, I think that would be great. Like, I don't know if you have like ever 10 different map options and then it can be used more, maybe that's a more um, specific tool that would be used for a specific client, for example. Um, or it might be a next level in the in the system instead of the free level. I don't know, but I just see how that would be super valuable. For sure, uh, I think choose that's a map for you know my specific business question, and then um, and then have a d divination just by hitting the button instead of trying to have all the cards. Yes. Um, the other thing is I didn't quite hear what Greg was about, like what his input is. Right. Well, I think I think there was a reason he was silenced for so long. I, I, I don't think maybe the intersection point that I thought was coming in is actually a good one. Um, or it isn't ready. Uh, so okay. we'll, we'll find out later with that, I think. So uh, I have a quick question. Does, uh, does Sunday at four o'clock not work for anyone? Perfect time. It works for me. <laughs> cool. Hi, Greg, you're back. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, I missed what Laura just said. I just heard her say it works for me, but I don't know. I missed what. Oh, the, the timing every Sunday at four. Okay. Oh, there'll be a meeting? Yeah. yeah. Nice. nice. I'll have my regular computer with me next Sunday. Okay. okay. Uh, I was bumbling around there before I got cut off. Um, basically, I have a what I think of as a living frame that I'd like to uh, help promote. Uh, it's it's basically the question is a it's it's a library that is something that I got from uh, Fuller and the exploring the fourth dimension, the practical applications of it, and I think that's what we're up to finding ways and means to uh, demystify and simplify what what nature is uh, you know, preparing us for, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. So I have a, this game board that I'm going to present tomorrow and I'll, I'm gonna send uh, Elijah the idea of how to plant his game on the board and why I think it's something that can um, get uh, drum up a lot of interest in it, basically. Um, aside from that, I, I, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, someone could ask me a question on. Well, I mean, while you're gone, I sort of thought that the, where we had been thinking yesterday maybe wasn't appropriate for today. And maybe that's why the communication wasn't going so easily. Um, because the, the main thing is, is looking at this, this, uh, this program that we're just bringing. Because what I mean, I had given it to Greg yesterday and gotten his question. And then the idea was coming if each of you use the program to come up with a question. And at the beginning of the game, everyone would get this question. You, you'd have one question, you get a, a reading, and then that's the beginning of you entering the game. And then you have this spell that you are then uh, using that to learn okay. how to participate in the idea. Could, could I say something? Sure. You just drummed. Uh, um, so when you took me to the cards, the three cards and the question, and it, I was hooked, I was involved. And at some point I needed a manual. I needed to understand what the maps were that I was looking at. And that's when you said to me, 
good question, good point. There isn't a manual that, <laughs> and I felt the, my guidance was telling me in the moment that we have everything we need. So what does that mean in terms, in lieu of a manual? And the guidance that I seem to have gotten, and that's what I was sharing with you yesterday, is that the object of the game, because you want these 12 player, 12 teams, 12 player teams, um, the object of the game is to develop that manual, that the process, it's very process oriented, it's that the manual doesn't have to exist before the game exists, but you don't want to lose people either. I was lost within five minutes. I wanted more, but I had no way of accessing it. But if I had a team of 11 other people and we were putting this virtual, this puzzle together and building this platform, it, it, it will have a kind of lasting, it's, this, it's, it's, it's the infinite design. So it's supposed to just continue. There's not a shelf life to it. So if we're right from the beginning developing a manual, then it will constantly evolve. Did, did, yeah, did I, I think that's great. I'm, I'm with Greg. I think that that's kind of the, that would be fun for all of us to do. We've all been exposed to the to the to the genius and the madness um yes. elijah's work at different phases for our life some with greater degrees of tolerance than others some for longer and lesser spells than others but some <laughs> process some part something that's called as it felt like you know what this is really important work um it's been useful for us at different points in our lives and i'm sure it can be useful for other people and I'm sure it would be really awesome to just be sort of in a product development thing where, you know, it's great that Nova can translate ideas into actions and we can give feedback and say, okay, well, let's try this or this would be great. Okay, how would that look designed? And just, you know, we iterate it and explore it. And it's in a web base, which is cool because a website means that all of us can access it individually on our own times and play with it and try it out. And we just sort of organically build this tool out that'll end up being able to serve individuals or businesses with that, exactly. you know, holistic, holistic service oriented intent that we all have to make this world, you know, a more beautiful place and, 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 you know, spaceship earth to be able to really serve all of humanity. I think that's a great game. I mean, I'm down to play that. Yeah. It, it's challenging and it, it's, it, as I said, it's designed, it's in the infinite design. It has to be that from finite, we're going from linear to nonlinear and creating this intersection. So it needs to be something that just continues building and you hand down from generation to generation and it continues. It's, it's got, la it's, it's lasting. I love that. That's cool. I, am I still here? We, we may dis we may get kicked off of this in any second. So just go back in again, if you, if you want to come back in again. Um, if, if we do lose it. So since I don't have other people's uh, contacts, if Elijah, if I could just send you the map and I have some updated ideas I, I, I figured out last night and sure. you could distribute it from your area and we could build the manual from that point. We could start there. Okay. You know, because water seeks its own level, the relevance and importance of these, the, it'll all make sense as we develop it, it, it will reveal itself. You know what I mean? It has a life of its own if we just give it that space. Well, I think something very interesting will develop. I mean, no matter what, th there has to be a sort of a, a team-like approach to this. And uh, so I, I think just learning how to do that is a big step, at least for me. And you're in the game too, so it's like you you've invented a game, and you're playing it at the same time. You're like, "Hey, kids, on the playground, let's check this game out," and you're in it too. You're not in in some. There's not a real hierarchy here. It's it's a level playing field, as I understand it. I mean, it's this is not the you know the cult of celebrity in action here. We're we're moving beyond that. <laughs> I mean, you're a character, but we're not, it's not a cult. We're here to create something lasting. Well, I, I've been called, I've been called a cult leader twice in the last year. Yeah, no, you're not a cult leader. 
<laughs> but uh, I got a pretty funny kind of group of cult people, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, is worshiping you going to have to be part of this game, Elijah? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Elijah, you were, you, were, you were stressing this concern the other day to me. That's why I said this, that you have, that you're, you're, you're in the game and you need a team to play with, but we're all students and explorers. That's what I was walking away with. It's that. It, it shifts the dynamic that to, to we're all students and explorers exploring this frontier. And it is a frontier. I mean, time is the frontier that we're exploring. And, and the practical applications and how we can serve the greater good with it uh, is what it's all about. And so if the motives are in play, then we have an infrastructure which I'm send, sharing with you that I've been developing this library to be. What can a library be in the 21st century and just living in that question? And your game ends up being a round table on the floor and I enter the library and I can enter this game in progress. And, and so that's anyway, that's, that's all I have to offer, but um, I'm really happy that we're gonna do this next Sunday. Yeah. And, you know, other times in between, depending upon who's who's working on what, but I, I just see that this Jupiter Saturn conjunction coming up tomorrow is the beginning of a new 20 year cycle. And it just seems as if a lot of things have been kind of slowing down until now. And I think that the new paradigm, or whatever we want to create together, it has a lot to do with timing. It has a lot to do with uh, as this world sort of falls apart, we're building a seed uh, at this time and that each of us has a, a unique piece to bring together. And it's very important that your piece be placed with the others in, in the right way. And so whatever Sunday at four is going to be is, is how do we bring these pieces together, I think, and honor the people that are here and at least having one weekly meeting. And so I think at some point there's going to be 20 people here and that's going to be a bit of a, a jump to see how 20 of us could actually work together. But um, the, the idea is that each one of those Mayan calendar lists is filled with someone and that each of us is a superhero that is bringing our particular piece. And when we bring all the pieces together, then we activate our higher DNA, which has been mapped out by the gene keys in, in many ways. And I just feel as if the time now is there for us to do this. And uh, I do know that something does come out if you just stick to it. And so thank you everyone for coming here. It's almost five o'clock and I just wanted to keep it at just an hour, just to, as a start. And uh, I think I'm just going to bring it to an end and I'm just wondering, does anyone, does everyone want to sort of give a minute to say, say something on, I would suggest to write goals for the next 20 years, like to, to really in the next day or so really get clear about what you want to create in the next 20 years of your life. And uh, I'll just over to you, Lori, do you want to give everyone a chance to say something before we go? Sure, I'll say, um, I just, I like the idea that Chinoa said about having a few maps on there, because what I've worked with the most, it sounds like there's lots of different angles, we've all come at one on one, we had a list of the maps, because I've been working pretty much with the choice, flow, synergy, harmony maps, and to take them out into the bigger picture. So I do really like that idea. And thank you, everybody, for what you're all bringing to the table. It's just, it's exciting that we're now here. And the time is right. Way. Lara? Um, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I like the idea about the maps too. Um, I think individually, it would be amazing to be able to use that and put my own spells in and save them. And yeah, that helps organize a lot. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Elijah, do you want us to 
prepare anything for next week at all? Um, I, I was thinking as part of a gift to everyone to give everyone the, the Mayan calendar, the 52 week calendar that I have. I've given it to some of you, but I mm. think for all of you, it's, it's a, it, it prints out real, really nice in a booklet. And it's, uh, it has the Mayan sign at the top. And so I think our power day is when that, that sign is there. And if we're in these 20 day cycles, where each person is sort of in their power day. And that's mapped out by the, the, the calendar. Uh, anyway, I'll send that to everybody. Uh, but you it, it costs $50 to go print it out at a, a printer. So um, I know some people are, are hurting, so I don't know about that. But anyway, sorry. Jordan? Yeah, stoked that we're meeting up. Uh, thanks for calling, calling us together. And I'm really stoked to have a consistent meet up in in bringing the uh new paradigm toolkit and the info matrix and bringing like the work of the planetary guardians to you know have some traction have some footsteps have some togetherness and celebration <laughs> bringing that into into life yeah awesome uh, zamir Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? You should be able to yeah, hear me yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just saying, I, I think this is great, and it's the serendipity of it, and the spontaneity, and the emergence, but it's almost like, you know, if we just show up, and we yes. want to create this tool, and, you know, we just bring our ideas, and do some of the work that's needed we're gonna have something that's gonna help us and help all these other people that'll be really cool and and a lot of things will emerge from that it's like we don't know what the future is but if we're just natural um nature just is abundant it's gonna make it good it's gonna make it really good <laughs> uh brooke Brooke may not be there. Uh, Nova? Uh, <clears throat> I just want to point out someone is trying to enter the room. I don't know if you saw that. Okay. Ananda? Ananda? Okay. How come I can't see him? Oh, you might have given me admit control. Do you want me to click admit? Uh, yeah. Bring him in at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. And Chinoa, do you want to say? Um, no, I think this is really great to bring all these people together in such a short notice. And it just seemed really easy for me to be here and hope it's really easy for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to reiterate how that, um, I just went to the website, whosaremedy.com. And while everyone's talking, I, um, I did the family one and I was first thinking about my son, my, my son first and my daughter. And I just want to reiterate how powerful these divinations are because they're just spot on with every question that I, that I bring to it. Um, there's something magical. Um, I don't have to sit there and try and figure it all out. It gives me a really clear answer and direction and where to focus. Um, so see to see it being manifested is just really wonderful so thank you elijah and thank you for bringing us together thank you Chinoa. How about, so greg we'll end with you and then ramayan we'll, we'll have a little chat with you for for the ending um great to see you uh so greg you just want to give a little goodbye i just uh am i on i i yeah. can just see you. i'm here okay good um no, I, I mirror echo what everyone else is saying. I, it's a fortuitous moment and you've, uh, you're taking a leadership role and I respect that and admire it. And, uh, and, and again, the, the fact that there's a weekly meeting, there's alchemy just in making that commitment and following through. It's that showing up that it's, it's really that simple now. And I think that's why each of us are excited about this because I can tell everyone gets that in their own way, that there's nothing 
needed that we don't already have. It's just about showing up. Mm. So that's about what I got to say. Awesome. You want me to stay? Yeah, just stay. I'd like you to meet Ramayan. Uh, Ramayan, are you there? I am here. Welcome. Why don't you uh, say hello to everybody? And we're just at the end of the, we, this may turn off at any moment, but why don't you come in and uh, say hello? Greetings, my friends. Mm. Good to see all of you. Just preparing right now for a Solstice broadcast tomorrow from Unify. We're doing, a, we're doing another 20 hour marathon um we've got sacred sites from around the world from Giza to Chichen Itza to Stonehenge all live streaming from the sites and sending some powerful intentions and prayers for the solstice um and um so this is a powerful time you know to gather and to seed really powerful intentions and I know Elijah's been saying that for a while now you know that seed your 20 goals or your 20 things that you want to accomplish and so it took that to heart and uh tomorrow going to be seeding some powerful things into the newosphere for this next epoch. So good to be here with you all. I was wondering maybe if you could end with uh, speaking a bit about Caravan, where it's at in terms of, we just showed everyone a, a program that can create a spell. I saw it. It's cool. And I've so been waiting to see that forever, that exact UI. So it's really nice to see it active, I got to say. So, so there's going to be a button saying create a caravan. Yeah. And maybe describe a bit how you would see that. Well, right now, what a caravan is, is um, a bit like Marco Polo is right now, which is asynchronous video threads with each other. Um, and um, basically, we're in a place where, you know, Zoom is good for certain things, uh, all us uh, seeing little tiles of each other and being in synchronous meeting. But some of the issues with Zoom is that you start getting a large amount of people. A lot of people are just sitting there, right, on or off camera, doing other things, kind of drifting, a lot of wastage of time. And so when you're really trying to get project stuff done, Zoom can be really a real hindrance to it. And so with the caravan, everybody adds their own 30 second to one minute you know, two minute asynchronous video updates on threads and you can actually start to compile stories and narratives and culture and creativity together without always having to be in a room together. Mm. Um, and so we have that software built and then the AI will auto stitch the videos from people together into an episode and launch that episode out. And Jordan was actually part of helping build that um, back in the day in the early Beam Team days. Um, and so now we're at a place where we have it, we tried to use it at a bunch of large scale events. We're looking at the potential use cases and now we're realizing that the best use case is actually productivity and remote work and remote work culture and collaboration rather than just quote unquote social media, um, which is kind of a misnomer anyways. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at with it. And obviously Elijah being one of my you know mentors and, and, uh, and friends, I'm very interested for how the inflow comes into that software especially in the context of remote work and productivity. So I'm sure there's a lot to explore. If you look, if you look at this interface right behind me, and you <laughs> down there, right beside new spell, it says out. start a caravan and start a conversation. Right, right where my bald head is. Or what, or where is. Okay, we actually don't see it, Elijah. Oh, you don't? I don't see it. I see it, start a caravan, there it is. Like, okay. So right at the bottom there. So, so the idea being that, you know, the inflow matrix is a whole bunch of software programs that are coming together, but the data is integrating, but you're going from sort of step to step to step. Okay. And so this is, could be a starting thing where you press the, the, the spell and then you go start a caravan. And then let's say all of us were in this caravan. And so each of us would be answering the question from your perspective, but let's say everyone here gets a minute and now we've got this 10 minute video that goes out answering the specific question in this specific way. Hmm. So to, to me, this team or this group and many other groups, but it is the beginning of bringing people together who want to participate in sort of like a research project where each of us is, is, is participating in this media and reporting on things in a very different way than is out there. So each of you is like a, an example of and this is this team is an example of and then the inflow matrix is bring together different functions different teams together and we're using it as a mental construct but also building it 
as a software program and creating like an artificial intelligence between us. And I think that's a big missing piece about artificial intelligence that we are nodes. And just between the 10 of us, there's an incredible amount of conversations and things that can take place. But as we- really The problem with that is that, you know, it shouldn't just be artificial intelligence. It should just be intelligence. And the more we can move away from the artificial part into intelligence is what I think you've been constructing because you've been aligning with natural principles and natural systems that make sense to the human mind. And so the artificial part is when you're abstracting from the way we naturally self-organize and you're abstracting to exploit humanity. Perhaps a shortcut there to, to do exactly what you just said is to um, uh, brand that as natural intelligence informing artificial intelligence. Nice, I like that a lot. That's what this is. It is what this is, exactly. And we don't have to change the language. Artificial intelligence is a term that means something to a lot of people, but right. natural intelligence informing into artificial intelligence is, is where it's at. If... Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. So I guess that comes to the end of the meeting. Um, thank you everyone for coming and we'll have another one Sunday at four and I'll be talking probably to everyone in between. And it looks like uh, we're getting activated to a, a much higher level starting probably this week, it would be my guess. <laughs> and uh, so much love to all of you and anyone else, else out there watching this. Cool. Bye everyone. Bye guys. Hi. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you, Elijah. Yeah, thanks so much, Elijah. <laughs>